The destruction of all three bridges across the Seam River in the Kursk region could force Russian troops to repeat the Kherson scenario. This was stated in a commentary to Espresso by military expert, Director of Development of the Information and Consulting Company Defense Express, Valery Ryabik, commenting on the information that the Ukrainian armed forces could have hit the bridge in the area of the settlement of Kariz. I would like to remind you that before this, a bridge was destroyed in the Glushkovo area, in the Zvanoi area, and now there is a third bridge which completely blocks the enemy's base area, which is limited on four sides and, in fact, we can talk about a certain operational encirclement, he explained. According to the expert, control over the crossings will leave the Russian army without the ability to provide its own logistics. According to Ryabik, this area has an area of about 700 kilometers, which is already under remote control of Ukrainian troops. A situation is arising where the enemy will be forced to make a difficult decision for itself and gradually do the same thing it did in the Kherson region when it was forced to retreat beyond the Dnieper, the analyst noted. Recall last week, it became known about strikes on a bridge in the Russian village of Glushkovo. The very next day, the Russians announced that it had been destroyed. On August the 18th, the bridge near the village of Zvanoi came under attack and was significantly damaged. And on August the 19th, Russian war correspondents wrote about the destruction of the last bridge across the seam. As reported by Defense Express, with all three bridges in the area destroyed, Russia now has no major river crossings left. This leaves most of the Glushkovsky district trapped between the Ukrainian border and the Seam River effectively cut off. This area covers about 600 square kilometers, roughly the same size as the area currently controlled by Ukrainian forces in Russia. Russian mill bloggers are already claiming that the destruction of bridges isn't a major issue because they've set up pontoon crossings. Public satellite images confirm this, showing that the pontoon crossing near the Glushkovo was restored. While building a pontoon crossing over the Seam River, which is 30 to 80 meters wide in this area, isn't difficult for the Russian army. Pontoon crossings have limited capacity, so the flow of traffic is much slower, Defense Express added. The rapid advance of the Ukrainian army in the Kursk region has stopped talk in the West about a ceasefire and negotiations. Instead, Western capitals are now discussing new arms supplies to Ukraine and permission to use them. The Telegraph writes about this. The publication notes that the successful advance of the Ukrainian armed forces across Russian territory has forced the Kremlin to redeploy thousands of soldiers from the occupied regions of Ukraine to the Kursk region. This is disrupting Russian dictator Vladimir Putin's plans to continue pressure on the front in Ukraine and achieve a turning point in the war. From now on, this will be more difficult to achieve, the analyst states. The article also states that due to the Ukrainian armed forces operation in the Kursk region, Moscow will no longer be able to insist on freezing the war along the current front line, since in that case part of the Russian Federation's territory will remain under Kiev's control. The Telegraph says that the window of time allotted to the Kremlin for victory this year has closed and the situation is beginning to change in Kiev's favor. Zelensky now has wind in his sails 
finally supported by his Western colleagues, the author emphasizes. Superb Ukrainian intelligence and U.S.-provided weaponry are being credited for enabling the rapid advance of Ukrainian forces into Russian territory over the past week. Some analysts believe they could move even faster if Washington allowed them to use the most sophisticated weapons at their disposal. Vladislav Zelezniov, a former spokesman for the Ukrainian Armed Forces General Staff, told VOA's Russian service that Ukrainian intelligence and the U.S. provided high-mobility artillery rocket systems known as HIMARS had been critical to the stunning advance. Ukrainian intelligence worked perfectly, he said. Therefore, some of the enemy columns rushing to the aid of the Russian army in the Kursk region were destroyed thanks to artillery and drones, perhaps aviation. And of course, the real scourge of the Russian army is the HIMARS, which turn into ashes a huge amount of weapons, equipment and personnel of the Russian army, he said.